Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Saturday. Over here in the Atlantic, we have a couple of features that are making news right now that need to be watched. The first one is Tropical Storm Harvey over here in the Gulf of Honduras. Becoming a moderate to strong, strong tropical storm, as we said it would yesterday, moving in towards the Belize coastline now. And it may be beginning to weaken as it gets surrounded by land on two sides here as the convection in the center is starting to warm and to become weaker. But it is a nice tropical storm. This is the radar radar out of Belize. Here's the center right here. Here's the island. I forget what this island is called off of the eastern coast of Belize here. But this is moving on shore now and the pressure is still at 999 millibars. has not strengthened much since yesterday afternoon despite convective bursts. But as noted, combined with the couple of things that this was dealing with, proximity to land, and things like that. It was not going to make hurricane status, but is making moderate to strong tropical storm status at 60 miles per hour here, moving into Belize, and will bring gusty winds to them that they should be aware of, but mainly a rain threat for these folks. A 60 mile per hour tropical storm won't be a huge deal for the folks in here, but of course everyone should make sure that they are safe regardless of how weak the system is. Now our next system that is going to be a big issue and a big ticket item as some people like to say is Invest 97L east of the Antilles Islands here. You can see a lot of convection is now firing with this. As we talked about, it's got west of 50 west now. And so the water is a lot warmer in here. And it's now beginning to slow down just a little bit. And we're starting to see the convection go off in this area of the world. And this is going to start developing now. The pressure is still down around 1,007 millibars as per the buoys in this area. This is going to start winding up a little bit as it moves into the Eastern Caribbean. And the big question with this, of course, is where it's going to go. And there is a lot that depends on the, these first 24 hours here, these next 24 hours, depending on where it wants to develop a center. Until this point, it's had a very broad circulation. It's not quite as broad as it was yesterday, but it's still broad in here. And it's been up in the air exactly where this tries to form a center. Now, if we want to be picky here, and if we look at the low-level winds, there are very weak westerlies down here. You can see them. There are very weak, maybe 5 knots or 10 knots down here. And the center is actually down here. The broad center of this whole thing is way down at about 11 to 12 north is where this is. That doesn't mean it will stay there, though. It could stay here, but it could also develop farther up here. And if you look at the ASCAT pass from earlier, this did not show a closed low, but the beginnings of where the westerlies are are shown here where the winds became stationary. If this was going to develop a surface low, it's got a broad structure here. The trade winds are very strong. If we were going to look at where it's going to try to form a surface low, it would like to form it along this gradient where the trade winds go from weak to strong here, because that's where the vorticity is greatest and the convergence is greatest, and also where the winds turn from southeast to northeast. So we would look for the low to form right about in here, which is at about 14 north, 56 west, which puts us right about here which would make sense given the satellite appearance to have a low forming in this region and moving off towards the west-northwest towards the islands. The issue is whether that actually occurs or whether this broad low tries to hang on and be more of a southerly tracker into the eastern and central Caribbean. That's what we're watching for right now because that could play a big part in the track here. These are the current models based on ACTF coordinates that are fairly far northeast here bring it generally over Hispaniola and eastern Cuba and into Florida. And these models, again, are they're heavily clumped. And although they're going to be shifting around a little bit, they are pretty clumped, which means that depending on where the surface center is, these coordinates that they are initialized with could greatly influence the track. Think about if the center was just 50, 50 miles farther south, look what we would have. A track over much of the water south of Cuba and then into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. It wouldn't take much of a shift to get something with le less land interaction. In a sense, if you're living in Florida, this kind of a track is what you want to see because it takes it right over the tall mountains of Hispaniola and then across the length of Cuba as well would result in probably the weakest storm that we could ask for in Florida in this kind of a situation because it maximizes land interaction. However, a 50 mile shift north 
or south would easily avoid most of the mountains in there, and that could be a bigger problem for Florida. That doesn't mean this isn't a problem for Cuba and Hispaniola. This would be a bad track for them, a very bad one, because it would bring all the heavy rains over in here and bring all that flooding, even if it was a weak system. So that would be very bad news for them. For Florida, you would want to, you would not want to track over the water on either side. You would want to see these islands take the brunt for you and then weaken the system before it comes in. But all that depends on where the center eventually forms in here. And it could be in a number of places in this area. So we will be watching very closely to see where the surface flow forms. Now over the next few days, the steering pattern is going to be dominated by this trough coming down out of Canada. It's going to be swinging in and digging into the eastern United States here over the next couple of days. And by day three, it will reach maximum amplification. This is the GFS at 72 hours. And this is where it has the storm along the southern coast of the Dominican Republic here. Notice this big trough reaching maximum amplitude right along the eastern seaboard. And you can see where the center, the axis of the trough is here, right at 75 west. And this is where it digs the farthest south. If we go out just 24 hours, it leaves abruptly. This is the motto that we've been having with the troughs this year. As soon as they hit the western Atlantic, this ridge kicks in really strong. And it's really been a beast this year. And it just forces these troughs out very fast. And within a day, they can be completely gone. So if it hits the ridge here, notice what happens in 24 hours. It's showing us where the ridge boundary is. It comes in here. The ridge is clearly set up right there, which means that our weakness is right in here which means that the storm is going to tend to start gaining some latitude near the Hispaniola area, which would make sense. So this would come across the islands, probably, probably pass a little bit south of Puerto Rico. But I should mention that depending on where the center forms here, if it forms far enough north, it could still get pretty close to Puerto Rico, which means that they shouldn't let their guard down on this, although the models are all south of them. And as I mentioned yesterday, I think this will pass south. That doesn't mean they couldn't get tropical storm conditions here pretty easily if this tries to develop, because see the northeast quad as it usually is with these developing systems, is the strongest and could still easily affect the island in here. So folks should be prepared all in this area. But if we're looking at this 500 millibar pattern, the weakness is here, which means if this is coming west-northwest now, it's probably going to bend a little bit more northwest as it hits Hes Hispaniola. But then as the trough lifts out, see the ridge comes roaring back in, and then the weakness will start to retrograde westward. So by the time we get out to 120 hours, the ridge is building in very far to the west, and the weakness is getting pushed back over the eastern Gulf of Mexico which means that this should come west-northwest, bend northwest as the trough comes in. But then once the trough lifts out, the ridge comes back and directs this back towards the west-northwest towards Florida through the Bahamas. That's probably an exaggerated track that I drew. It would be very gradual like this is probably what we would see. And this is the issue because the concern here is that if this hits Hispaniola, it may have to deal with Hispaniola. But if this trough at 72 hours draws it far enough north, it could have a clear path over the Bahamas north of Cuba and then into Florida, which would give it a lot of time over water with which to strengthen. That's something we don't want to see. And again, if the center is far enough south, it could also pass south of the islands, at which point this trough would not affect it as much. And it would simply pass on its merry way up into the eastern Gulf of Mexico once this weakness here retrogrades back over the eastern Gulf by day five. And this is something that the European shows as well in terms of the upper pattern, 72 hours, the trough is over Jersey, and then it, it leaves within 24 hours. It's lifting out very fast, and you can see that the weakness retrogrades back over the Gulf, and the system depending on where it's initialized, could be somewhere in here or down here, moving west-northwest, either curving up into the Gulf or moving into Florida and then up and out. And you can see that the European brings this straight up across Cuba into Florida. And what's a little bit concerning about the European the last couple of runs is you notice how, how weak it's weak, strengthening coming across Cuba, and then it strengthens coming into South Florida. If you go to the next frame, it's still over Florida, but it's a lot stronger. If you move into the next frame, it's over Georgia, but even stronger still. So for 48 hours over land, the model shows the storm strengthening. And this may not actually happen in reality, but it's a little bit concerning because it means that conditions in this area could be very conducive for strengthening of this storm. The GFS shows the exact same thing. So to have the model strengthening the storm despite all the land interaction in here, and even while it's over Florida, means that we need to watch this carefully because the storm could be a a real potent 
entity that may try to strengthen in this area despite the land that it could be interacting with. So overall, this is a system that needs to be watched very carefully and here. Not going to be too much of an issue for the islands. They will get gusty winds and showers and thunderstorms today. Puerto Rico and and Hispaniola should watch this first here as this could be trying to become a tropical storm by the time it gets into this area. I do think it will pass south of Puerto Rico and hit Hispaniola instead, but again, a lot here depends on where in exactly in this area the surface low tries to form and initialize with 97L. And it will probably, my track right now takes this across Hispaniola and then west-northwest across the Bahamas into Florida is where I have it right now. Again, depending on where the surface low actually forms, we could still have it pass just south of the islands, directly over the islands, or just north of the islands in here. There's a little bit of a cone yet that we're dealing with. Florida is probably the most threatened by this in the United States. Hispaniola, Cuba, the Bahamas, and Jamaica should all be prepared for a potential storm, and we could still be dealing with a hurricane in this area, possibly even with lots of land interaction. The atmosphere in here is very conducive for this to try to strengthen, so folks in here should be ready for this from the eastern gulf all the way up to the Carolinas and here and these Caribbean islands and the Bahamas should be prepared. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.